Oh, you're doing it again? So, I'm going to do another video here. I'm on a roll tonight. I'm going to do a few videos posted up separately. Uh, if you have any questions, please message me. Hit me up on Facebook or something. My name is Dave. Um, this next product that we're going to work on, I really like these. Um, there's many styles and many types of materials you can use when you get into falconry. This is a product called Biothane. Uh, and I used Biothane on a Harris Hawk and a Red Tail. I've seen it used a few times. Biothane's got pros and cons. It doesn't collect bacteria. It forms nicely to the bird. Um, it's very easy to clean. You don't need to treat it. Negatives, uh, as far as like safety of the bird goes, if your bird ever did get away, this stuff will last forever. It's not really, I wouldn't consider biodegradable. Um, you have to cut these off. Um, it will be on that bird for a long time. So if you're going to use these, I would make them individual grommets. A grommet here and a grommet there. I would not necessarily run a grommet to connect the two. And that way when you're running your leather just through to connect to your anklet, the leather will deteriorate over time from your just, therefore releasing the anklet. But if you put a grommet, one grommet through and connect these two, it's, it's, that's it. It's there forever. So be careful with biothane. It is a nice material. We're going to stick with leather for tonight. People have actually done paracord ones before, which is interesting. I haven't done that yet. Or, or I like to dabble. I don't necessarily use them all, but I love to learn them all. This method here for the anklets uh, is really, really nice. I like it. It's uh, We do a lot of rehab and education as well as falconry. We're licensed for a lot of different things or sub-licensed for the uh, rehab and education under Rachel Sign from the arena. Uh, wildlife rehab Lorena, check them out. Um, so with the rehab birds, things like that, sometimes you have to put falconry equipment on them to for, for their safety. And then, of course, educational birds, you still need to because you don't want uh, uh, a released bird, I guess, uh, uh, on your glove. <laughs> you have to be able to um, keep it on the glove. Um, so here we go. This method here is reusable. That way we're not going through a whole lot of leather. We're not having to cut the leather off every time a bird is released. Uh, it saves a lot of work. Of course, it's based on species. So I'll probably do after I make a few sets as I will take pictures with a little note uh, and keep it in files so I can remember what each set's for as far as the species and the size of the bird. It's really simple to do. What I had done is my wife's red tail um, I used her template because I want to make these for an owl. Uh, same thing I made these for. So I took her uh, her template, and you can find these templates online, or you can make them. Uh, uh, you can find uh, templates online. You can buy a kit with the templates in them. Um, some of these I actually made myself, uh, just based on measuring birds' feet with uh, this tape measure, and then I was able to uh, build these. So once again, I got the leather. I have my template that I already made. Uh, if anybody would like this template in particular, it's for about a 1,200 gram uh, red tail, uh, but it should this should fit a, um, I have a male a great horned owl. Uh, it's a rehab bird and he's healed, or I believe he's healed, but he hasn't flown for me. So I want to get him out of his medical box and on my glove and you know, work with him to get him to jump so I can get him onto the Koreans and, and make him fly. Um, build those muscles back up. All right, so let's go ahead and try. Let's see with a pen, I guess, for today. I have my standard tools I use all the time. Pen, marker, exacto knife, scissors, ruler, uh, hole punch. In this case, though, the hole punch on here isn't big enough, so I have the grommet kit, and I have the this type of hole punch with the block and stuff like that used with a hammer. Um, so that's what I'm gonna use for that today. So all I'm doing is a template I made. Um, it was very simple. It was a standard circle. Like I said, you know which one I used already. So the standard circle. And then I just cut it down to a smaller size. And then I put a line and I put a slice in it and I fed the template back through to itself to make sure that when it's through and it connects right here, that both these holes that were punched were going to align. Okay? A lot of trial and error with this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, don't be afraid to fail a few times. It's 
I have, let's see, this is a paper wrap. I had a lot of different, uh, looking around for real fast, I can't find it. There we go. This is like my third time trying to design this template. So, uh, you see I got both has the measurement lines. So don't be afraid to fail. Back to the happy tree. Trace it onto the rough side of the leather. Discussed that already. Okay, just like that. I am also going to do the circles where my grommets go. It may be better for me in the future to make these out of a thin wood or uh, some type of plastic or something. Because over time the paper will stretch and rip and all right now I only have one master so that's not a good thing either should always make more I'm even running through where that line is so I can see my generic template my generic outline I'm only gonna do one for now then I'm gonna kill the video so I can do the other one let's see I'm gonna cut this one out for the most part I'm going to go straight down the line. Alright, we'll go to the end and I'm going to cut up. I'm going to just have a small piece of leather to work with. Okay. Now, what I can do on this side, trim it. The, the one of the downfalls is the any marker or pen on that rough side of the leather where the light hits it, it makes sometimes it makes it a little bit hard to see your line. It can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But welcome to life. It was simple, everybody be doing it. Well, it is relatively simple though. Okay, so the table I'm working on is not as steady as I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have my two holes that I need to punch out. So I'm going to go to the floor real fast. So I apologize. I'll be off camera for a second. Get my, my mighty Thor's hammer out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and punch these holes on the floor. My holes are punched. Now I can go back through. And where my line is at, I want to take my X-Acto knife and I want to, I'm gonna, the, the line is an end on both sides, two ends. I'm gonna go a little bit in from that line. And the reason I'm gonna go a little bit in from that line is because for the test run, I want the leather going through to be really hard to go through. And if I can do that, because you'd rather it be tighter to go through than to come undone really easily. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to widen it. And you slowly just go out a little bit as you need to in order for the leather to slip through. But you just don't want it to be easy right off the bat. There we go. So it's still a little tight. So that's my test fit. Keep in mind when you do leather versus paper, there's gonna be a discrepancy in how it fits as well, especially when you go your thicker leather. So what I'm seeing now, my holes aren't lining up exactly like I want them to, and that's gonna be fine. As long as they're, they're, they're close, so if they're way off, then you're gonna have issues. 
So, unfortunately, I was not prepared for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some grommets out. That's the wrong one. So there's my grommets. Now I have two types of grommet setters. Um, I went ahead and I bought a set. You can do that if you like, or you can do, uh, or you can go ahead and use a different style. This is the one that came with the block, uh, and it came with my punch. All right, and that's pretty simple to do. I'm not really going to demonstrate it, but uh, I'm not going to do it. I'll demonstrate though. So the male side. You can figure out why it's called male side. It's going to be on your rough side. All right. Your female side, it's got a bevel, and the bevel will match. It's hard to see on camera. That bevel will match the inside of your small base. All right. So what you're going to do is you take your male side on, into the rough. You're going to set them on top of one another, and you can see this is the male punch and the female punch you put it together align it and smack it with a hammer and that will set the two together okay but once again this table is not set up for that so I'm gonna go ahead and use my secondary method Ta -da. you can buy these Mike Stocker I think has them uh, Western Sporting Good I believe has them too and all I did is I put the male side over here so it's a little bit different Male side. So I apologize, I got those two backwards. I haven't used them in a while. Male side, it sits in there. So you have uh, female on male, and you have uh, female on male. Fit them together, nice and neat. I need to do a video on that and squeeze. And then release. And it's done. If I need to do a video specifically on how to use a setter and how to use the punches, I can do that. So once again, male side went into the rough side. Feed it in. Punch it done. Really nice technique. Really nice tool. And there we have that. Now, once again, my test fit. Make sure it goes through, which it does. It's a lot cleaner looking. And the holes are really close to being aligned properly. When you put your anklet through, your just all right, your just through, what I'd probably recommend doing is putting the jess on the side. Make sure these there is a left and a right. It all depends on how it's held. So they are they are universal. But the way you turn it determines what leg it's going to go on. Personally, I do with the smaller tab on the outside. And you'll know because you have a rough side and a smooth side. And that's your rough side, side sticking through right there. And then I'd feed it through. Then pull and button locks it. So there you go. Now we'll tell you this. Um, you can also, before you treat them, you can also uh, soak them in, in a little bit of hot water and put them around something that's got a diameter of your bird's leg and it will help keep the round shape like the biothane does. Leather does the same thing. But over time it just comes undone. But new water and new shaping goes a long way. So once again, before these go onto a bird, go ahead, use my saddle soak, and Give it a good rub in there. This is a very, very important stage. And what I like about this too is if you're doing falconry and not so much rehab, like I said, these are gonna be amazing for rehab birds. But I have so many different sets of these and different sizes made, and we just have them constantly on hand to move around. And if a bird's going to be in a box for a while, 
Oh, our educational bird's not going to go with us, but we needed to take them off for another educational bird that they're going to fit on. You can do that. Look it in by hand. But for falconry as well, it's just so much more convenient because I can take these off my bird once a week, once a month, however you want to do it. It's your world. Do as you want. Um, <laughs> Bob Ross. The, uh, that way you can treat it and put it back on your bird. If you're going to treat it, make sure you let it sit for a couple hours before you put it back on your bird. Because all these oils will soak into the leather. I'd rather them soak into the leather than into my bird. Just keep that in mind. And ladies and gentlemen, we now have an ankle move. Now, another thing you can do, there's a, it's, it's a thousand things you can do with these. You can decorate them. I have all these nice little punches. If you're into doing um, hunting squirrels, these are nice to have on there. Make sure when you measure, you compensate because they are also on the inside too. You want to make sure these are smooth and you want to make sure that you compensate for the thickness it takes up, space it takes up because it will be a tighter fit. So you want to make your ankle a little bit bigger if you're going to put these on. But the shininess helps because it distracts the squirrels. Squirrels tend to bite your anklets rather than your bird. Uh, and also you can hang things off of them which uh, I have a set here that I never finished. And that's what this is for. These are designed to frail outward and uh, birds get distracted and try to bite on the closest thing to its face and they'll bite one of these instead of your bird. Birds can lose toes. Also, you can take, you can uh, roll these edges down manually, which is a little bit more comfortable for the birds. Or you can put these little slices in here, which will naturally fold down over time as you, they form fit to your bird's legs and it's a little bit more comfortable. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, there's not one set rule. There's not one set thing to be done. That's what I love about falconry. But I hope that helps you. Welcome to the world and make yourself some anklets.